everybody welcome back to my channel here at black barrel customs my name is jonathan and in today's episode we're going to be doing a breakdown and discussion of my custom built daisy long rifle that i've named rebel yell so without any further ado let's just get down into it all right um i had a lot of fun making this one um you probably noticed the bayonet on the end of it. Um, I'll start with that. That's actually a piece of steel that I had found out metal detecting that I'd hung on to. And I bent it and formed it to shape. And it's ground in a triangle pattern. You know, it's flat on top. It's got two edges on the side. Um, it's not sharpened. You know, I'm not going to sharpen it. I'm not going to make it a death weapon out of it, you know. Um... To the gun itself, the uh, the BB gun chamber, you know, the, the tube housing on it is actually a slip over that slips over the original 105 buck. Um, it just slips and slides down. I've got it fixed into place, you know, permanently. It's a thin wall aluminum. That's all I can really tell you about it. Um, what else we got to do with the barrel um i've been able to modify the end of it to accept the original shot tip off of the 105 on this model here it has the fiber optic front end sight um, and that's also how you fill the bbs on it you know you pop the tip off you just pour your bbs down into it there ain't no trap door hassle the um, Leaves a nice, clean, smooth finish on the barrel. You know, nothing distracting, too distracting. Getting to that, let's talk about the uh, the copper or brass uh, accents that I've added to it. It's uh, j it's just crafter's foil. You can find it from any craft department. You know, any store really. Um, my four stock. And rear stock are match stained in Verithane's 251 red mahogany. Um, to finish it up, what I did was I put a hard coat of shellac on it. And it gives it a good durable coat. It has a nice sheen to it. I won't say a gloss. It has a sheen. Um, the barrel body, the whole thing, whenever I assembled the body... And I got it all straightened out. What I did was uh, I actually painted it in a satin black. So it's not too glossy either. Um, in my description of this, I mentioned that it was a... Uh, the forestock on it was removable, a single screw removable slip-in. Now what I mean by that is if you come to the back on a 105... You have the permanent rivets on each side, you know, and the single screw goes up in the front on the bottom where the bayonet attaches. It's recessed. So what you'll do, let me remove the bayonet here. That just drops out. And this gun stock will fall down and it slides right out. Now... Here on the bottom, be careful with it. There on the bottom, I've actually recessed it to accept the bayonet. It has two neodymium magnets in it, and the rear hole is actually for the back of the bayonet. It has an elbow to help lock it in place. To secure it in place, let me get this put back on here. You know, to secure this in place, what I've come up with is just a synthetic, fake, gator skin strap. It gives it that southern bayou look, you know. And to fix your bayonet, you know, you just kind of lay it on up in there, find its little home. Slip, fits right up in there with the magnets, and you can slip this right over the front and bam. It's fixed, it's secured. 
it don't go anywhere, you know, there you go, you know. Now, whenever it comes, oh, the rear, the rear of the butt stock actually give it a nice deep sweep, you know, like a traditional old flint lock or hammer lock, you know, rifle. Moving on to the inside of it, it needs all the help it can get, you know, getting a BB to go down the shot tube. So what I did is I reached out and I got in touch with uh, Cobalt 327 and I ordered one of his uh, HP, HP compression springs. And from what I can tell, it's a pretty dang good spring. Um, it really woke this thing up. You know, on in front of that, you know, this is a 105B BB feeder housing with a shot tube. And I've modified it and I actually had to enlarge the abutment seal and with that said that accommodates you know the fixture and abutment of my stainless steel shot tubes thing BB travels down now this isn't how long it is inside this is just some of my stock that I have you know I just wanted to give you an idea of what what you've actually got going on inside the barrel it's a uh, seamless stainless steel. I believe it's uh, 18 thousandths. Don't quote me on that. Inner diameter. Um, paired with my own in house made shot tubes. This is just a blank. I haven't even drilled it out yet. I just have it stamped and formed. But that actually goes into the modified BB feeder housing that I, that I build for these. Other than that, oh, another thing that I've done, the trigger assembly. Um, on these newer 105Bs, they actually have a, a, a ratchet click system, and I've deleted that. I got rid of it. Um, a lot of people just don't like all those noises and clicks. It's kind of an annoyance. So what I did, if I... I ground all the teeth off of it except for the rear tooth so whenever you go to cock it there is none of that clickety clicking it's just bam there you go I don't really deem this as a, a if you're looking for precision and accuracy this is probably not the gun for you um, Yes, I can reach out and I can hit targets with it. Um, the drop-off point, if I had to guess, was any, is anywhere around 35, 45 feet. Um, closer targets, you, you know, you can actually aim and, you know, you get pretty good shots with it. Targets that are farther away, I just wouldn't even try it, you know. I, I can deem this as, you know, like a close target rifle. Um, close quarter battles, you know, bayonet. Um, don't be doing that. <laughs> um, I got some targets set up in the background here. And I've started out with one that's probably 15, 20 foot away, and they range all the way out to, I'd say close to 70 feet. It don't look like quite like 80 feet. So I, what I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be pause, stopping the camera, pausing the camera at each target. I don't have a chronograph to share like feet per second with you because even I don't know what these carry. Um, maybe if I can get a you know get some money saved up or whatever i'll actually invest in a chronograph and i can give more accurate numbers for all of my future builds um what else it was kind of a windy day up top you know i had to come down here in the haulers you know this is just my little getaway spot the wind ain't really blowing down here it seems pretty nice and calm they're calling for rain. I hope it holds out. 
But, uh, yeah, let's just dive on into it. Here we go. Now, all right, so what I have here set up is I got four targets. The closest one here, it's probably, I'd say, you know, not quite 20 feet out. The other target across the ditch over here, this target over here, I'd say they're, you know, touching 30. The target that's farthest up on the hill over there, I'd say it's quite, quite around 70 feet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off with the closest target and I'm going to work my way out up that hill. I'm not really holding out for, you know, that target up the hill. Um, but we'll see what it does. I just hope that whenever the BB hits the styrofoam backing, y'all could hear that flap, you know, let you know that it's hit it. If not, well... I might just have to remake this part of the video again, but we'll see. We'll see how it holds out. So we got some BBs in there. I'm gonna give her a cot. Here's our first target. Got that one. We'll go for our left target over here. Nice flat. Do this one over here. That one come out good. Now for the tried and true up here. <laughs> Which I am not deeming this thing is accurate at all. So just bear with me. Hopefully if we get it you can hear a thump. But we'll see. Missed on that one. Oh, hey, we got her. <laughs> Good deal. Um, I'll try her again. We'll see how she does. Oh. No, I just... You know, it's hit and miss on these longer targets, you know, which I don't deem it a long range rifle to begin with. You know, it's just something fun, close around, you know. But man, on these close targets, you know. I'm sure you could hear the travel all these BBs got to go down. Got a long way to go. Now let me get this bayonet fixed up. I'll just lay her on up in there. Get her secured in. And man, if you're just having a bad day and you can't hit no target, just walk on out here and stab her. Well, let's go charge some hills, guys. I guess I'll catch you on the next episode for the next creation. I hope you liked it. And if you want to, you can comment, share, subscribe. Just, uh, I'll catch you on the next round. See you guys.